Hello. So, um, yeah, I wanted to uh, start by clarifying that um, I work for Google as a consultant. And so the presentation today is very much my own work, my own opinions, and doesn't represent the views of Google or any other of my consulting clients. So um, Google Fonts uh, is a, a service that provides hundreds of web fonts, which are free, open source, and made for the web. And a web font is a font that's loaded as part of a web page's design. In the past, then we were restricted to using web safe fonts, fonts which were generally installed on people's computers. And often different systems had different fonts that were somewhat similar, so they were grouped together. And so this led to a rather boring typography on the web. So here's, here's an, a kind of example of this where the typography of this magazine article, the line length is very long, the titles, you know, they're not really distinguished very clearly. And uh, the, the quality, the richness of the web is, is just not there uh, as compared to something like a printed magazine. So when people wanted to use custom fonts in this kind of richer uh, typography, then they would often do it with an image. You can see this is an image. It's not real text. And um, this can you know, even be complete pages of text. So this is the, uh, the e-paper, the Jagran e-paper. And you can see that this is all just images of the printed paper placed on the web. Um, and then uh, this is uh, another Indian newspaper and their mobile site. And you can see you know, the whole text here is an image, which means that it can be very slow to load. You can't find it yourself. You know, if you're searching in the page, uh, it's not going to work. And similarly, search engines cannot index that content easily. Um, other services that rely on the text being real Unicode text won't work. So uh, you know, speech reading for people with vision problems, uh, it won't work. Translation tools, it won't work. So it, it's very frustrating that it, before web fonts, you had this choice between real text with uh, your plain typography or more rich typography that didn't really work very well. And again, for, uh, for uh, Indian languages, um, the problems were you know, especially tricky. So a lot of text uh, in the DTP print error was not Unicode, and the text was tied to a specific font, which meant that you could use the font, but that the text was just kind of, uh, yeah, it, it seems like kind of nonsense text. Um, even though visually it might work. So web fonts uh, is this relatively new feature of web browsers. And it's now supported by um, you know, over 90% of browsers. Um, and the latest ones, um, it's, it's supported nearly across the board. So uh, this, this kind of happened in around 2008. And there was a startup Typekit that launched, which has since been acquired by Adobe that provides uh, you know, a collection of web fonts as a service. And this takes away some of the complexity and technical uh, issues around using web fonts. So this is a, an example on, of Wired Magazine's web typography. And again, this is quite a plain magazine example. But you can see how the titles are, you know, by using a, a, a web font, have that little bit more quality feeling to them. And the, the typography in general is, is more refined. And so um, some web publications are really taking this to the next level. So this is a, a feature in Rolling Stones magazine. And the kind of feeling of the experience of this really you know, is, is a kind of digital equivalent of reading a, a very nice printed magazine. And um, the use of fonts is essential to go with the images, um, the colors, the rest of the design, the interactive parts, the videos. So that having you know, rich typography on the web 
that's as good as a printed magazine is now possible. Um, so uh, I'd like to uh, highlight there's a very nice tool called WattFont. Uh, it's a plugin for the Chrome browser, and it allows you to click a little icon in your toolbar, and then you can see what fonts are being used and where they come from. So as you see typography improving on the web, you can kind of learn a little bit about what those fonts are and where they've come from, something that's not possible in print. So Google Fonts. Google Fonts provides many, many fonts for Latin. And um, the concept uh, of this has been very much to provide minimum viable product fonts. So there are some showcases that show off what can be done with Google Fonts in Latin. Um, and uh, there's a, you know increasing quality of the collection over time. And so this has uh, led to the fonts being very popular. So um, the Google Fonts page has an analytics area where you can see the total number of font views um, since the project started. And um, this is a big number. So you can have a web page without videos, but you can't have a web page without text. So the most viewed video on YouTube is the Gangnam Style music video. And that's been seen over 2 billion times. But the most popular font on Google Fonts, Open Sans, has been seen over 500 billion times. So um, web fonts is, is really still just at the beginning, though. So the um, Alexa top 1,000 websites rank is um, analyzed by the HTTP archive. And so this shows you know, trends over um, the top 1,000 sites. Um, you can see you know, things improving. The, the size of CSS, the richness of design has been increasing over time. And, um, they have this graph showing sites with custom fonts. And so you can see that now it's around 45% of the top 1,000 fonts, uh, sites, the top 1,000 sites on the web are using custom fonts, which means that it's less than half. So um, that's with the top uh, 1,000 websites, which are mostly in English. Um, so Google is increasingly uh, you know, considering how to reach the next billion people. And Indian users don't have enough fonts available on the web to create content with rich typography in the languages of their pride. And the next 300 million internet users in India won't use English. That's why we're working on enabling the internet in Indian languages, which is the key to driving growth, said Rajan Anandan, the managing director of Google India. And the demographics on this you know, is that um, Many, many people in India can read, but much less can re read English. And the future of um, the Indian web is not going to be in English. So traditional Indian kind of DTP era fonts, um, there's, there's many, many fonts designs out there. But they need to be you know, redesigned for Unicode um, and uh, improved. So Google Fonts has an early access page where some of these kind of earlier fonts that are available as um, Libra fonts are available quickly, but not all the features of the Google Font service are included. So here is um, Bhaskar.com, and you can see that they are using okay. So, so but the Bhaskar.com site is using web fonts now. So this is real text, but the design of the 
Latin and Devanagari has not really been harmonized. The, the weight, the vertical heights, they're not you know, really designed together. So I was very lucky um, that when I was uh, studying in England, I was able to attend the University of Reading's typeface design program. And this is one of the leading institutions in the world where they are encouraging designers to think about global type design and to design typefaces where the Latin and um, the Greek, the Cyrillic, and other global scripts are designed together. And so um, this is leading to a kind of uh, you know a new a new batch of type designers uh, around the world who are designing new fonts, which are um, you know high quality and being made for the web. So I want to do a, a very fast demonstration of how easy it is to use a web font on a web page. So you go to the Google font site, which is google.com slash fonts, and then you select the writing system, in this case, Devanagari, and you find a font which you'd like to use, and you add it to your collection. You can compare fonts in the collection in the review area and decide which ones you want to use. And then on the use page, you get the code to insert into your HTML page. So I, maybe I made an example earlier in case there was a problem. There we go. So um, you insert the code into the top of the page, and then you have a little piece of CSS where you name the font family that you've added to the page, and it becomes available. So the Google Fonts you know, has help information about this to get started. And there's uh, many articles around the web about using typography. This is very much a growing trend. And the reason that typography uh, is important is that it drives behavior. So this article um, uh, mentioned a famous study done by a documentary maker. And he printed a, a, a text, an article, and he asked people to tell him whether they thought the article was true or not. It was, a, it was kind of an ambiguous topic. It was about asteroids. You know, asteroids killed the dinosaurs. And so we are at risk of that, that asteroids, an asteroid could hit the planet and uh, it could be a disaster for us. And should we worry about that? Is that something that we should be concerned about? Maybe yes, maybe no. So having the article set in different fonts, people who had read the article in the Baskerville font said that they agreed with the article more often than people who read the font of the article in Comic Sans. And so, you know, we have a kind of visceral reaction to letters, that the that, that letter forms sh shape our perception um, and, uh, you know, our feeling about, about things. And this is kind of, uh, in a way, subliminal. So if you want to know more about typography, which I encourage you to do so, one of my favorite uh, top recommendations for beginners uh, who are not visual designers but are becoming involved and need to do typography and make typography decisions is the non-designers design and type book. There's also a web project I've been involved in called Open Educational Resources for Typography. And this provides a textbook uh, at a university level about typography. And it's uh, available kind of freely in a kind of Wikipedia way so that um, you can read it and if you want to uh, contribute changes or ask questions, you can do so on the GitHub collaboration platform. So I think that in, the, in introducing richer typography to your uh, documents or your applications on the web, 
you can do A-B testing. You can kind of scientifically see the effect of the typography uh, on your users. And I think that's very exciting. So there's an increasing need for new fonts. And um, uh, the uh, increasing need for new fonts, you know, Google's providing a, a small collection that's growing. But there's always going to be a need for, for more fonts and new fonts. There simply just aren't enough today. So FontForge is a, a free font editor that anyone can use to uh, get started. And the FontForge community has developed the Design with FontForge book, which is starting to create another kind of free textbook for people to learn. There's also the Indic font book project, um, which provides more technical details about creating Indian language fonts. And there are discussion forums online. So there's a Google font directory discussions group where designers who are making these fonts are asking for reviews of their work, posting their early sketches and their work in progress. And there are also other forums around the web, more generally for type design, with critique boards so that you can post your work in progress and get feedback. There's a very famous Google font called the Lobster font. And that was developed by a designer in Argentina entirely in this way, where he had never made a font before. This was his first font. And by posting work and asking for reviews, he was able to improve it in an iterative process. So uh, my uh, colleague Patham here has um, you know, recently kind of become interested in type design. And he'd like to say a little bit about why uh, he feels type design is important in this region. Thanks, Dave. Uh, so just picking up from where he like stopped the presentation, uh, I'll just dive into quickly what something he mentioned, like split, like A-B testing. So when you think about uh, India, Sri, uh, Sri Lanka, like Indian languages and scripts uh, to like, in order to do a split test on fonts, we don't have that much fonts to like test. So basically we need more and more fonts uh, to uh, build a richer experience for the users. And uh, the most of the designs uh, that uh, like different uh, examples they've uh, demonstrated, these, they're using these like different typographic styles to uh, sort of take across a certain message if you uh, remember the whole uh, the test with Baskerville and Comic Sans uh, you need to have these different like fonts with different styles to take this like have this rich typographic experience for users in this region as well so um, for that uh, it's it's really important to get like more native speaking native uh, designers working on the fonts because uh, as native speakers, as native uh, uh, readers, uh, we have sort of an edge uh, compared to uh, the West, the designers working from the West because we have seen the script, we are familiar with the scripts and uh, we know to how extent uh, we can sort of modify certain elements and to certain uh, how, uh, how far we can go with the script. So, this is really important uh, when we th think about uh, type design. And also I'd like to talk about the, the licensing or the uh, how like the Libre fonts works. So the, uh, the collection on the Google fonts, everything is uh, licensed under open fonts license, basically a Libre license that uh, 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 enables anybody to use uh, a font without virtually any restriction for uh, commercial use and they can even distribute it. And the most interesting part of this license for me is that you can modify uh, a font to sort of suit your certain needs. So say if you are, uh, yeah, so say if you are working on a, this specific product for a fashion company and uh, you are using this specific font and you need you don't like the some certain elements of the font and you need to change 
or sort of modify, maybe uh, add a certain graphical element into the font. So basically the OFL license allow you to do these changes and host this font for yourself and use it without any restrictions. There are small restrictions like you can't use the original name of the font, uh, the, but, but that's, that's okay. I think uh, compared to a, a proprietary font where, where you can't do anything. So I think this is really important for economies like India because we have limited resources uh, put into design and uh, marketing budgets. So when it comes to uh, uh, these efforts like uh, promoting design and improving design quality, we, uh, the Libre movement and shared knowledge, shared resources can be really helpful for countries like Sri Lanka, uh, India and like, you know, uh, our region. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so uh, to conclude, the, um, the growth of the web in the next few years, I think, is going to be really astonishing. The growth of these kinds of you know, uh, $50 US phones, efforts like the Android One uh, uh, project Google is doing, is going to lead to, um, you know, this font, uh, this phone was $50 this year. So next year, it'll be maybe $30. And the year after that, maybe $20. The year after that, maybe $10. And, um, you know, over the, over the, in the next uh, short time, Everyone on the planet who has a job is going to have an internet phone. And so that's going to happen a lot faster than uh, those people you know, are going to learn English. And so the need for websites and web applications to be localized and to have typography that's as good as it is in English for all the world's languages is important. <laughs>